agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliche can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. But we did not meet, so I could prove how very original I am. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want, or even need, must matter little. What matters is what Detlaf wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Mm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. Abruxa had taken an interest in it. It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Kobinares' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Obliterae. There's a copy of Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Kovinarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it. Just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated, so without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Kobinaris gave a rather poetic name, Resonance. Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Deadlaf was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Deadlaf's hideout. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. And the ornamentation. It comes from our home. Where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here, guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans and the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I in turn gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. Can't you just summon Detlaf? You're both hired vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Last resort? The hell. Why? Uh... There is a being who can summon Detlaf. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being... Well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you. Let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of resonance won't be easy. You guess correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's mamoon glands. The closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. Rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help.
What was that? A raven? Rather a common sight at this latitude. Very intelligent fowl. I asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned. Him and his brethren. Perhaps they'll find one in the area. And I would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would. With all due respect to your skills, my friend. It will take them some time, nonetheless. So, rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? Wanna get me to confess? Gonna have to try harder. <laughs> I love a challenge. In that case, my ears are cocked. What must I do? <sighs> How about you get the ball rolling? Reveal one of your secrets. Vampires, intriguing creatures, must lead fascinating lives. Anything in particular interest you? Curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, at first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges, for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbor's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, Sir Dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back. Defeated the wild hunt together. Ooh. Seems I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough. But it's a conversation we'll have another time. Gotta ask you the big question. One everyone wonders about. What happens after death? You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlaf, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. Man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate. Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity is a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible, as my presence proves. But, but, I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit. But Triss helped me get it back. Actually, pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. 
I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living eye of vampire's help. However, if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say, but I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? That's what interests you most? Whether I'd like to be a witcher again? Many things interest me, but we've not much time left. Never chose to be a witcher. Fate chose for me. Had it been my choice, I'd have picked a different profession. A profession where I wouldn't have to risk my life every minute of every day. Maybe even one that had earned me some respect. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment. Ever vigilant, even in his sleep. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caraberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. For somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... spoons. Spoons? Spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Well, perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote, no more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. Sorry, Geralt. I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct. And a curse. In one place. That a coincidence? Or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that white. Uses it in its bruise. Do you imagine the white will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. <laughs> For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were gonna make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. Renovations coming along all right, Barnabas Basil? Superbly, sir. General refurbishment has been completed. 
and I took the liberty of adding two racks, each upon which you might hang weapons and armor, if you've some pieces you'd like to display. Likewise, I have prepared a few spots in which new paintings might be hung. In other news, the laborers dusting out the cellar have made a most unusual discovery. I believe it's something you'll wish to see. You mean the lab in the cellar? Saw it. So, one of the previous owners interested in alchemy? A laboratory? Alchemy? I know nothing of it. But I understand that to a witcher this must be a very intriguing find. It is. It was walled up. The equipment's pretty ancient too, so it must have belonged to someone who lived at Corvo Bianco before you started working here. Whoever it was sure knew their stuff though. Got dragon glass vials and flasks, stills, sublimators, vengerometers. Forgive me, sir, but I fear I don't follow. Just saying, it's top-notch equipment. True masterpieces of craftsmanship for use in alchemy. Brewing a concoction with this stuff versus doing it over an open fire? Well, there's no comparison. Then I am all the more delighted you discovered it, sir. Starting to really like this place. Maybe we should keep going, refurbish some more. What do you think, BB? As you wish, sir. Shall we see to the house or the grounds this time? Thinking about buying a comfortable bed. Always wanted one. Excellent idea. In your profession, rest is supremely important. But say the word, and I shall order you a bed from the carpenters who craft comfort for the court. Order me a fine bed, please. Think I deserve one at my age. True indeed, true indeed. I shall send a runner at once. The bet will be in place by this time tomorrow. Was wondering about the guest room. Not that I'm expecting company, but... Oh, but that is immaterial. All self-respecting homes should boast a comfortable guest room. What if someone were to drop by unannounced? The sooner we start on that, the better. I can tell a man of action immediately. I'll see to it myself. The room shall be ready in two days, in my opinion. Is there anything... anything else you require, sir? Along the path, I've often picked up well-crafted, beautifully ornamented armor. Some of those pieces would look great on display here. I agree. It would lend the place a certain witch's air. Shall I order new stands at once, sir? Just please make sure they're solidly made and nicely finished. It goes without saying, sir. There is nothing worse than splendid armor upon a subpar stand. By this time tomorrow, they shall be ready to display your finest finds. Is there anything, anything else you require, sir? You know, Roach, my horse? Well, we've been through a lot together. And since I've finally got a decent place to stay, I think she deserves one too. Oh, a sturdy stable testifies to a most honorable owner. Have them refurbish the stables. I shall get to work at once. Yet finding workmen and completing construction takes time, though likely no more than two days. Will you be needing anything else, sir? So, sometimes I have to brew a potion, but I can't find the herbs I need growing anywhere nearby. Well, you're in luck, sir. The flower garden, once kept by Madame Nina, Monsieur Bolius's wife, seems the ideal place to cultivate herbs. In fact, it's roomy enough to plant shrubbery. Herbs there will save me hours of painstaking searching and harvesting. I believe we shall have sown the first seeds in two days' time. Will you be needing anything else, sir? Ever play Gwent, BB? Funny you should ask, sir. I was quite adept in my younger years, but that was so long ago. I fear I've limited my interest to collecting now. Managed to assemble quite the set of decks. Huh, sounds interesting. Mind showing me what you got? Not at all, sir. But only in action. A round or two, perhaps? May the best man win. Do you wish to play against any particular faction, sir? I'm a witcher, so monsters. As you wish. Would you prefer I use my strongest deck or a weaker one? Use your strongest. At your surface, sir. Well then, let us play. I congratulate you on your victory. Shall we continue playing? Maybe later. Got something I need to do right now. As you wish, sir. See you soon. What is it? Got your coin, sir. And a wee gift to thank you for the trust you showed. This blade's the Reckoner. It saved my arse a fair number of times. Thanks, Chanfinelli. We'll call it even. One last thing. I'd like to apologize. For the whole minging kerfuffle.
Thank you, Sir Witcher. Let Piotta keep you in his care. My soul cannot handle this. It simply cannot. Oh, let me out his wounds. It's over. I thank you, sir. And you must forgive me my momentary loss of composure. Are you in need of accoutrements, monsieur? Fellow looks abandoned. You its owner? More its temporary steward. By order of the Treasury Minister, I am to serve as caretaker of Count Deloni's properties and estates. The Count is missing. Yet, no one at the palace warned me. Villa Fidet is the lair of bandits. That is to say, it was, but is no more. Thanks to your heroism, Monsieur Witcher. Looking for scrolls, manuscripts, bearing diagrams of Witcher gear specifically. Any chance you've happened on any? I've not yet managed to inventory the sundries. I arrived just a short while ago. The bandits arrived with their terror. But you may ferret about if you so wish. Thanks. So long. Well, well. Starling Strakenoff, House Palm Titled Harlitzbrut, has bit the dust. May he rest in pain and agony. You've earned yourself a steep price cut here, Witcher. Stragon. Name's familiar. Ran into him a while back. What's this? He, he must have been a horrible hound shacker. Decent folk don't bear that name. Can't say if that's true for all the dragons, but this one sure wasn't decent. Met a bad end, too. Justly so. You carved up the knob copper. I knew it! Druids did it for me, actually. Burned him alive. Oh, lovely. Lovely! See you later. I assure you, Skellige is just as strong as the other factions. It shall soon be considered canon. Of this, I'm certain. I don't know. Always been an Ilfgaard man myself. I must give it some more thought. Geralt of Rivia. Saw a notice about a Gwent tournament. By all means, you've come to the right place. I am Count Martin Monnier, organizer-in-chief. Our tourney is more than mere diversion. We've a mission, see? To spread word of my brother's brainchild, Skellige, a new Gwent faction. Tell me something about them. Their design embodies the Isle's spirit. The rage-filled potency, the rough, brutal beauty. Famed Skelligers, heroes of lore, berserkers and beasts, ogle us from the cards. Bran Twirsek is the faction's leader, of course. And the other famous Skelligers? Yalmar and Serison Kreite, naturally, though not conjoined. Also Hemdal the hero, the venerable druid Ermion, the list goes on. Where'd you get the idea? I mean, why bother? All Beauclair knows me as a great lover and promoter of Gwent. My brother, dead for some time now, was known to be the same. We shared 
another great passion, travel. Spent a great many years at sea in our youth, marking out our territory <laughs> in multiple corners of the world. Yet the one that truly grabbed us by the stones were the Skellige Isles. The stormy sea, consumed by a fever, a suicidal awe, dashing itself against somber cliffs. That is the image I retain. It and others like it inspired my brother to defies the new faction. The tournament. Where do I sign up to play? Right here with me. I've one slot open, but there's a condition. You must use cards of the Skellige faction. You see, I've already asked a great many seasoned players to do the same. Alas, all fear novelties, disdain process, care too much for the climax for winning. So they insist on playing with their tried and true decks. Long story short, you need a sucker who will risk it. Take a stab at proving Skellige's no worse than the established decks. Best way to do that would be to win this tournament using your brother's cards. We understand one another perfectly, I see. Behold this trophy, standing stiff and strong. It could be yours if you win. Already got a good enough deck to play in the tournament of Skellige. Might I have a peek? You do indeed. Come back in two days' time, then, for the start of the tourney. There you are. A pleasure to see you again. The Skellige faction, how do you find it? Honestly, not one of my favorites. Hmm. Yet I believe you will easily win the tournament wielding it. Any specific tournament rules? Mind giving me an overview? Firstly, might I introduce the contestants? Superb Gwent players all, hailing from the world's farthest corners. Hamal Ochen Dankbali, an Ofieri merchant. Eric van Frog, a patrician from Novigrad. And lastly, we are proud to welcome a Skelliger. Ye blind? Not Skelliger, Skelligirl, damn it! Naturally, no offense meant. Agnetha Scott. Her effort-charming isle temperament in evidence, along with assorted beats, baubles, ropes. As to the rules, they're simple. Each player adopts a faction they cannot change for the tourney's duration. Lose a match, and you're eliminated. The winner from among you shall advance to the semi-final to face the winner of the tourney's previous edition, His Excellency the Ambassador of the Empire of Nilfgaard, Master von Hitt. The winner of that match shall in turn face none other than me, your humble servant. Hands off our Gwent! No new fucking factions! Protesters have gathered outside. Quite a few, it seems. Hands off our bloody game! We didn't want any new factions! Money, are you dozy cunt! Stop doubling with dwarven tradition! Change cannot always please everyone. Gwent traditionalists resent my efforts to expand the canon to include Skellige, but we shall pay them no mind. Mind telling me what factions the others will be playing? It is no secret. Eric van Frog will play the Northern Realms. His Excellency, in a flush of patriotism, chose Nilfgaard. <laughs> Hamal Ochendangbali will play the Monster Stack, and Agnetha Skold has chosen Skoyatel. Yours truly, of course, shall await the winner with a Skellige deck. I'm determined to prove its value. I invite you to join me on the terrace. The Herald shall soon announce the tourney's start. Let the tourney begin! In round one, Agnetha Skult faces Eric von Vrog, and Geralt of Rivia plays Hamal on Gangbali. Let's grab a table. A wager would you wish to make? What did you have in mind? Weapons do I collect, and your sword of silver my eye has caught. Should I win, I should take it. Should I lose, to you another equally precious shall I give. All right. So be it. Good match. Thanks. And upon your victory, congratulate I you. What drove me to wager a sword against you, no I not. Clearly to guide me, the universe ceased. Here, you may it serve well. I'd never have lost if you hadn't cheated. And my land, folk who slander like that don't live long. Because we don't let them. I 
accuse me of cheating again, and I'll cut your tongue out. Enough. Hands to yourselves. As Gwent is a gentleman's sport, we expect all its players to demonstrate impeccable manners, and we cannot tolerate any disturbances. Thus, by decision of Count Monier, the contestants from Novigrad and Skellige are hereby disqualified. Gentlemen's sport. <laughs> well, I'm a lady, and we ladies don't give a flying fart about a tourney where any measly prick can accuse us of cheating. With round one completed, the standings are as follows. Agneta Skolt and Eric van Vrog both disqualified. Geralt of Rivia has defeated Hamel Ong Denbali of Ophir. In the semi-final, Geralt shall face the defending champion, Ambassador Von Heen. I am honored. I shall... Your Excellency, a pure pleasure to play you. The pleasure was mutual, I assure you. Congratulations, Richard. Stop desecrating Gwent! To any and all new factions. Seems there's some trouble brewing. Scoot, Olius, off your asses and hide to Skellige, ye ale-loving seal slappers. Please remain calm and stop the verbal attacks. Stop your mum from fucking ferrets, Monier, and hands off our Gwent. Maybe instead of hollering threats, you ought to just explain what it is you want. We've said it plenty of times, yet no one ever listens. Got me listening. Gwent's an ancient pastime. Its rules were set ages ago. Exactly. Determined in keeping with the laws of nature. There should be four factions. That is the optimal number. We'll not tolerate the introduction of any others. It would disgrace the tradition. Aye, leave our Gwent the fuck alone. Enough of this. Then come here to Java, but to break fucking heads in defense of tradition. Come on, lads. Had enough? Still got the urge to add new factions? Enough! I shall summon the guard! I got this count. Sure, you can shut this tournament down, but there'll be another, with who knows what new rules. If you don't like them, don't enter. Play somewhere else, however you want, but you'll never stop other folk from playing however they like. Bollocks! Like my good friend Zoltan Chive says, if one says you're talking bollocks, they could be right. They could be wrong. But if multiples say you're talking bollocks, well, you probably are. So let's take a vote. Who else here thinks I'm full of it? Zoltan Chive? I haven't seen that rascal in ages. How's he doing? Zoltan's just fine. Attention, everyone! Our outing's taken a new turn. We're to sit and drink vodka with Zoltan's pal. Gentlemen, wait. We've still the final round of the tourney to play. Final? Fuck that! Aye, Yaki Raffiberg, to hereby declare my participation in this tournament. And I demand to play the victor. We'll settle whether this Skellige faction's worth a flaming bag of shite once and for all. Agreed, but please show some patience. We must first play a pre-final. In the, uh, pre-final, Count Monier, representing the Skellige faction, shall face Geralt of Rivia, also playing with a Skellige deck. My brother's dream has come true. Skellige in the final, and played by both contestants. Good luck. Congratulations. The best man has won, playing the best faction to boot. Thanks. Good game. Skellige won. What a bundle of pish. Tournament's not done. Now it's my turn. That is what we agreed. Let us resolve our differences here and now. Now to determine the ultimate victor. Geralt of Rivia, playing the Skellige faction, shall face Yaki Raffiberg, playing... Skyatel! Let the better man, or dwarf, win. Thanks. Good game. Bollock blasters! What hurts most is fucking Skellige one! But as they say, tough shit. Congrats!
Come on, lads. Let's get soused. No, you must stay, for I wish to treat you all to a tipple. We must toast the premier of the new faction. And if anyone wishes to play a friendly match of Gwent, I see no reason why not. Thank you for everything, Witcher. No problem. Had fun. You proved yourself a true Gwent master. Here, the grand prize. You earned it. Thank you very much, Count. Thank you once more for deigning to take part in my little tournament. I hope we shall meet again. Who knows? Farewell. And then he ran straight into the crowd, burning bouquet in hand. All thought it a part of the performance, so they only laughed, even when the decor began to catch fire. It was not until the flames engulfed Baron Mahevkin's beard that folk began to realize something was amiss and went to put out the fires. <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Bolius and Madame Nina threw some first-rate balls here. It was so. In this regard, Baron Rossell was decidedly more reserved. So tell me, Barnabas Basil, what's the wine situation like here? Am I gonna produce any this year? This year is out, I fear, sir. Last autumn, a fungus destroyed all the vines. Baron Rossell had new ones planted, but it will be some time before they start bearing fruit. Assuming that is, the fungus does not reappear. Mm, that'd be bad. This sepramento got me dreaming. It's amazing. Isn't it, though? Allow me to top you off, sir. There. Thanks. <laughs>